If you have ever finished an entire tutorial and had no idea of what you just learned, go ahead and hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel. I'll be talking about the top programming languages in 2023, but I'll also be talking about why they're important and how much you could potentially make using these different technologies. But before we move on, I want to thank HubSpot for sponsoring this video, but we'll get to them a little bit later on. Now, the number one programming language used by professional developers today used by 68% of professional developers today, according to the survey is JavaScript. Who's not surprised? Who's not surprised? I'm not surprised at all whatsoever. I mean, you look everywhere. You look at tech Twitter, you look in social media, every developer out there, whether if it's front end or back end, uses JavaScript and JavaScript has been taken over for the last couple of years. Now, when it comes to JavaScript, one of the things I want people to understand is that JavaScript allows you to get into the tech industry with the least amount of friction, in particular as a front end developer. Learning JavaScript for a lot of people, it will be the most difficult language that you probably will have ever learned. Just because it's hard doesn't mean that you can do it. It just takes longer to learn. Now, when it comes to JavaScript, again, I always recommend to people when they ask me, Chris, what should I do to get my foot into the toy in the industry? I tell everyone, learn front end development, learn JavaScript. That is the way into tech as a front end developer. Going to tech as a front end developer, specializing in JavaScript, in particular, React JavaScript is the way to go. Now, just because JavaScript is a top programming language doesn't mean you just learn any JavaScript. First, you learn vanilla JavaScript, but when they mention JavaScript, it's not just vanilla JavaScript. This includes React.js, Next.js, Svelte.js, Vue.js, Angular. There are so many different JavaScript libraries and frameworks out there that you can learn within the world of JavaScript, which is absolutely huge right now. Now, when it comes to JavaScript, what should you learn? obviously vanilla JavaScript. And if you don't know what vanilla JavaScript means, vanilla JavaScript is literally just JavaScript with no libraries, with no frameworks at all, just learning JavaScript all by itself. But you don't just stick to that. Eventually you'll want to learn React.js, right? Which is a JavaScript library. And then Next.js, which also is utilized with React.js. It is huge right now. Next.js is very popular. It is blowing up. They have conferences coming up around just, I mean, literally just around Next.js within itself. So yes, I 100% recommend learning JavaScript, especially if you're trying to get your foot in the door. And of course you can do JavaScript for the back end, like for example, Node.js as well, right? Now, how much do JavaScript developers make? JavaScript developers make around 70 to 90K per year, right? Which is pretty good with no degree at all whatsoever. But what people don't realize is that as you grow in your career, as you hit your three year mark, as you hit your four year mark, five year mark, I have a homie who works at Amazon, makes about $320,000 a year as a front end software engineer for Amazon. Now, please note, this person also does a little bit of back end there too, though. Even though this person was primarily a JavaScript developer, when this person joined Amazon, of course, you have to eventually learn back end because you can't just be a front end developer, you have to be a good developer, not just front end, not just back end, but good overall. Right, so I 100% recommend this. Now, next on the list in regards to the top five languages that are used out there, isn't in particular a programming language, but more like a markup language, which is pretty much what you use to make your website look the way it does. JavaScript is what you use to be able to move things on your website, manipulate the DOM. You can use JavaScript to do a ton of different things, but JavaScript in the front end is not good with just being JavaScript. You use JavaScript with these particular markup languages, which is HTML, and CSS, which of course makes total sense in regards to why HTML CSS is popular because JavaScript is often used with HTML and CSS. You use JavaScript to manipulate the DOM. HTML CSS by itself does not pay well. By itself, it does not. I mean, I guess you can get an email developer job paying you around 100K a year, but that's it, right? When, when I received an offer from Silicon Valley, my, what, fourth year in the tech, it was for an email developer position, not even particularly email developer, but of course there was a lot of different things, but because I was good at doing email development, they offered me $95,000 a year. I said no to that. Why? Because I don't want to just be an email developer. I want, I don't want to be stuck at 100K a year. I want to reach that level and I want to move further. I don't want to be stuck in this one niche of email development. Emails will be around for a very long time. I'll tell you this as someone who did email development a lot as a middle developer at entrepreneur, it is very boring. It is not something I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be able to try new things back end, front end, you name it, right? Uh, now I'm doing ELT, ETL pipelines with data engineering. That is so much more fun <laughs> than just email development. And I know there are people out there and maybe one person particularly that emphasizes try being email developer, then use that to get your foot in the door. But that is not the end all be all. Do not just be stuck as an email developer. Please do not. 
get to that point if you want to but i want people to look at the long game look at look at not just where you can be next year but where you can be five years from now five years from now do you want to be stuck at 100k per year maybe 110k or do you want to be at 200k do you want to be at three hundred thousand dollars per year that is up to you so HTML CSS is great, but don't just be stuck with that. It's one of the top, I mean, of course, top used languages out there because literally every single website in the world uses HTML CSS and almost Java, and JavaScript, right? JavaScript as well. So yes, learn that, but don't be stuck there. HTML CSS email developers could make around 100K a year, but in the world of inflation we live in, to be honest, do you want to be stuck at that for the rest of your career? No. So learn JavaScript and HTML CSS. Now, this brings me to the next point popular programming language on the list python and before we even get into more about python and why it's so popular and demanding i want to bring in our sponsor hubspot what i want to show y'all which i'll put in the link in the description below is that they have an introduction to python which is pretty amazing especially for someone like me who still uses python on a daily basis and this guide has become particularly helpful for me for example they introduce things like what is python what are methods and functions coding standards things like the programming best practices, even things up to advanced Python, and we'll even recommend additional resources to you for free. So if you want help learning Python or pretty much something like a cheat sheet to help guide you as you learn Python and want to make that bag, I'll put the link in the description below. They have an introduction to Python for you to check out. It is absolutely free. That is it. I hope y'all enjoy it. So why is Python one of the top programming languages out there? I'll tell you why right now. All right, so Python, again is very popular and one of the reasons why it's so popular is number one it's very easy to read the syntax is clean and simple compared to javascript okay working with python for me is so much easier than javascript i was, I, I was able to learn python much faster than i learned javascript but that also could be because i already had experience with a programming language like javascript python has a very strong community a uh, very supportive community as well. And the thing with Python is that you don't only just use it for things like data science, things in general, back in development, but you can also use Python with web development as well. And on top of that, I think one of the reasons why Python is so popular is because it's taught in school. It's one of the programming languages that are taught at universities around the country and around the world, to be honest. Now, Python developers are working in data engineering. The average data engineer that works at Python, right, could make around $145,000 a year. That's the average median. From what I've seen, data engineers, data scientists, and et cetera, you name it, could make so much more than that. To be honest, north for $200,000 a year. So if y'all want to make that bag, I highly recommend you learn Python. But I'd recommend first moving to front-end development if you don't have a degree. Get that, your foot in the door and then slowly learn Python. Slowly learn back-end development. Learn ETL. Learn ELT. Maybe slowly move to data engineering where you could potentially make so much more than as you could as a front-end developer. Now, SQL. And this is really interesting. My five years in tech, I did not work SQL whatsoever at all right I, I never had to i never had to do anything with a lot of data i mean i, I worked a bit with apis and etc but i never did much with sql until i joined that until i moved into the data engineering space right i do a lot of data integration now with etl elc pipelines um, transforming data working with orchestration etc um, that is what i do now and now i work with a lot of sql now that i work with it professionally i can see why sql is very important so what is sql if you do not know sql is I mean, primarily used to manage relational databases. What is a relational database? It's something like um, Postgres, MySQL, right? While, while there are non-relational databases like MongoDB, we can get to that into another, in another video, right? But why is it so popular? It's because we live in a world of data. Data rules everything, right? There, there's reasons why Facebook is a big company. Instagram is a, is a big company. TikTok is a big company. Is it just because of their platforms of entertainment that they provide to the world no it's because of the data that they have and because of that data they're able to create an algorithm that makes you keep watching content on their platforms <laughs> but anyway these are the top programming languages in 2022 which will also to be honest will be the top programming languages in 2023 anyway thank you all for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace